was saying good morning, but it's noon. I don't know about your Chinese, but here it's just afternoon. So thank you very much for having me. And I'm going to talk about presenting the project proposal. As you're aware, this is a very, we are very time restricted. So it's just going to be short games, but maybe you get an idea. Um, I think most important, and you're surely aware of it, that most important is the quality of your project. I mean, most important is that you have a great project and that, but also how that you convey the excellence of it because it doesn't help if you have a wonderful and uh, endeavor which no one understands that that's the case. So I think that both the content of the project and also the form are essential. So I'm gonna talk about these two um, issues. Here's, here you see the outline, what I'm gonna talk about, the form of such a presentation and the content. So we're thinking about our presentation of the proposal. That's at least what I was thinking about by uh, preparing this. So before, before you're going to present your project, I would always advise to do proper research in, in advance and what to expect. And um, mostly maybe in certain uh, areas, it's good to talk to people who have applied just in that agency or in that um, forum before and ask them what's important to remember and what are the, what's the context really. Is it very formal? Is there certain, if you do the presentation in person, is there some dress code? Is it going to be online, hybrid, face-to-face? -face? And it's also, I think it's often very smart to take contact with the, with the contact persons beforehand because even though they might not be the one, ones who make the decision eventually, it's always good to have them on team and they might also provide some insight information. And it's also important to be aware who's on the in the committee. Is it uh, experts in the field or more administrative stuff? So really, I, could, I would suggest that you really make your good research before you do your um, presentation. And then it's also something about the appearance. I think, I mean, that sounds superficial maybe, but I think it's both important to know whether it's more formal or casual, and then also to really be yourself. It doesn't help if you dress out and don't feel authentic or if you just don't feel comfortable when presenting your project. And then oftentimes you're also supposed to introduce yourself and your expertise, and I think of course, we are all, all individuals with loads of expertise, but obviously in such a context, you should present just the expertise that's relevant for exactly that call. And it's also, I think you might be aware of it when you when you want talks to people and address them in a personal way, just like um, really addressing the audience might be a, a way that they're going to like you and be more in favor of your proposal. Even before, I don't know, that's not the COVID thing to do anymore, but before maybe shaking the hands of the committee, such things as is appropriate and really in the context, but to really see that you're talking to humans who also are human in their decisions. And of course, um, what always makes a nice impression if you first you show the outline, this is what I'm going to talk about. And then you, we should remember that people don't have a long attention span, right? And they might have listened to lots of uh, similar or other projects. So at the end, it's always smart to, to really repeat the key points you want the committee to remember. And also it's important to keep exactly to the time to really show that you're professional. And, but um, why do you want to be professional? And like I say, like you shouldn't, um, you should really try to catch the attention of the audience and be professional. You also want to be personable in the sense of that you also want to be liked, even though it sounds maybe like something you wouldn't think is so important, but it's like I say, these are humans who, who if they are in favor of you, might might also be in favor of your really of your project proposal. And then at the same time, of course, it's really a no-go to have typos or on your slides or in your presentation should all look very neat, at the same time, sympathetic. And then if you now turn more to the uh, content of, like now I talk much about the form, what's maybe nice to have in, in the back mind. When you, when you uh, think about the content, it's I would always read the call 
really carefully and see, okay, what do they ask? What is mandatory? What do we have to fulfill and what's desirable? And then it's nice if you, when you address the call, you really mention everything they have written. And you, uh, even, if, even if it doesn't sound very creative, it's, I think it's smart to use the identical keywords and the terminology that's written in the call. So you show really that you answer just what they want and you present your project really presents the perfect fit to what the uh, fund, uh, funding organization wants to have. And then usually you would give, of course, some introduction to the theoretical background and preliminary work. And there again, you show, you know the literature and you would just present what is exactly answering the call. And you also, oftentimes, um, it's asked that you show some, that you are giving some um, write or tell them about preliminary work, what you have done. And again, like what I said earlier, when you present yourself, it's really smart to just show what all you have done that would just answer what they want. And so you just, you are the perfect person to do just this project. And similarly with the research gaps, because um, I mean, any field has lots of gaps. And then when we think about this project proposal, we think, okay, which gaps are relevant in this gap and how can I demonstrate to fill them? So I would just, um, presented like this is the obvious uh, things you want to have and that's A, B, C, D. That's how I'm going to answer just these research questions. So I'm with this project, I would both answer to the call, but also I would answer open questions in the field. And then when you, when, then it's important to also um, formulate very clear objectives that these and these objectives and these research questions would just be the answer to these research gaps. And again, I think often we forget we are experts in our fields, but these people in the committee often aren't, maybe they, they are generalists, they know much about much, but um, so it's very, I think it's very um, essential to really clearly formulate and, and make them possible to grasp these research questions and also and the objectives to really maybe even paraphrase and repeat it so that also people who maybe don't pay attention 100% all the time, which is, I think, very human, that they really get it and really see why you answer the research gaps with your objectives. And then also the, when you then formulate and present your work program, it should always, of course, be very ambitious. So people think it's just impressive, but it's also at the same time important that it's realistic. So it, it won't fall on good grounds if you present a super ambitious program that is not at all realizable. So um, maybe stretch yourself so far that they think you will attain something very innovative, but that it's still within the reach of the funding framework. And of course, again, like people, like I said, they, um, they listen to many um, projects or they read many proposals. So it's really nice also to use visualizations and maybe show in small figures what you're gonna do so that even with a short lens, people are able to grasp what you're gonna do. And um, that's what I, I said this already a little bit, like it's, you wanna give the impression that you're really the specialist, the specialist and the expert in the field. So of course you would use the right terminology, uh, specialized terms, but remember there are people who don't, who aren't the experts. So it's always nice to paraphrase what you're saying. So you repeat it, you sort of serve both the experts in the committee, but also those who maybe are not that familiar with the field so that they don't feel stupid about themselves and that they can follow you and really think, oh yes, um, that's smart what this person wants to do. In that sense, you both demonstrate your expertise, but you also accommodate the audience. And as I said before, really repeat the central points, preferably by paraphrasing. And of course, as I mean, every project has its limitations, that's natural. But in the, in the process, when you, wanna, when you wanna apply for funding, you won't focus on those. Sometimes it depends on the, on the call, but sometimes, 
they want you to um, to address potential risk, like what could possibly go wrong. And then you would, of course, talk about it and also um, show how you're going to solve it. Anyway, even if you're not, if this is not part of the call and you're really obviously not um, focusing on the limitations when you want to uh, present the project, you should be very aware of the limitations and also practice that beforehand with a very critical audience so that you get all the difficult questions and you have already practiced answering them. And also, you, um, I would really um, encourage you to really be aware and make some good answers because there will come these questions and you will have the perfect answer in the back end and maybe even have some additional slides that would just show that you have thought about everything when you want to apply. So I hope I made it just in time as I told you. Just want to uh, repeat that most important is really your project and its quality and but at the same time this excellence must be communicated convincingly so i really believe um, that both the form and the content are essential so please if you have any questions you can have them now or later on thank you very much